Independent Radio. It is noon, and that means we are on to a new show. But first, support for WRAR comes from Avery Evans, a.k.a. the Cultural Chameleon, in honor of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Central Virginia. NAMI seeks to improve the lives of Central Virginians with serious mental illness through education, support for individuals and families, resources, advocacy, and anti-stigma campaigns. Information about NAMI's programs is available at namicentralvirginia.org. All right, we're about to turn it to Chopping It Up Geek, and then 12.30 we have a grain of sand. Hey everyone, this is Chopping It Up Geek, and I'm your host, the Culture Chameleon, and we're broadcasting on WRIR 97.3 FM, Richmond Independent Radio, and today I have a wonderful and amazing guest. I have Jeremy Belcher of Beats and Geeks. Yeah, what's going on? Hey man, how's things going with you? It's going pretty good. That's good, that's good. Well, for those who don't know, Jeremy Belcher is a part of a collective that puts on a a gallery showcase kind of a music gallery showcase yeah i'd say that yeah called beats and geeks Mm -hmm. and he also belongs to several other musical groups that deal with video game music what do you call that the genre what's what would you call the genre uh vgm i guess you know some would call it just like vgm remixes uh there's a ton of people that do that you know and then there's also chiptune which i don't i don't do too much myself personally that's getting into like the tracker software and getting into the chipset you know and getting into the actual cartridge of the of the uh of the console and I, i i do more like synth work and stuff like that so but yeah, with, with Beats and Geeks, we're mainly just trying to promote, you know, video game remixes, people that are doing like the nerd culture thing, you know, synth wave and retro wave, just stuff that's not getting as much exposure in Richmond. And, you know, I, I think it's about time. <laughs> I, I think you're doing musically what I'm trying to do with my show. Yeah. <laughs> like trying to bring the, the nerd culture and different dynamics of it to the forefront mm-hmm. in Richmond and hopefully everywhere. Speaking of that, I kind of parallel that with you because... We don't get that many Comic Cons here, and we had yeah. Wizard for three years. Mm-hmm. And when I would ask people, when I would go to the Wizard Worlds, most of the people were from out of town and not Richmond. I'm like, I know so many people that like this here, but yeah, they didn't represent. But yeah, and you've, you've got to go out of town to to go to like a, a good convention. You know, I mean, there's been a couple that I've tried to to start around here, but it's you know, there's on a much smaller scale. So if you want to go to the big conventions where all the big guests are, you're gonna have to go out of the city. Like Magfest. Yeah, Magfest is a great uh, music convention for games. You know, there's there's different ones out of state. I, I am gonna be at Mag Labs, which is a convention uh, up in Northern Virginia in Alexandria, uh, and that's September first. Okay. And that's like a sub event of Magfest. So. Uh, I'm 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 mad because I would try to go, but I'm trying to <laughs> make my way to Dragon Con. Oh, uh, okay. Dragon yeah, Con, Dragon Con, one. be playing some video game stuff down mm-hmm. there too. I I went in 2015. It's it's crazy. Down yeah. There. Yeah, I've so. been to probably about like 45 different conventions just around the different you know different states and stuff like that. So sweet, sweet. So I love uh, the culture. It's uh, oh, me too. <laughs> me too. Me too. What got you into the video game? genre for me i was i was a pretty nerdy kid and you know i I was fine with that and i just like to play my video games and you know spend a lot of time on the computer and you know other kids were out there playing sports and just outside and i I just wasn't really about that so i was always playing games and just that seemed to take up most of my time so that music was kind of like engraved in my brain you know it was always in my head like Mm -hmm. you know i was beatboxing the toe jam and earl or just you know humming the final fantasy theme or you know whatever it was that music played a big part in my life. And uh, I had an older brother that got me into a lot of video games and an older cousin as well that they just always had the latest video games. And so I was just always exposed to a lot of it. And uh, and I grew up also listening to a lot of hip hop and my brother listened to, you know, all the all the like hip hop from the early 90s and Biggie and the, you know, Bone Thugs and all that. So I always had like hip hop around too. So I would kind of mix those two and like bang on the desk and, you know, drum along and beatbox to it. And I would do that along to the video game music. 
And for like the longest time, I was like, man, if I could just get a keyboard where I could get it all in here and just, you know, try to do it. And over the years, I'd slowly, you know, got better at figuring it out. And then I eventually got a, a, a DAW, uh, which is digital audio workstation, where I can go in and actually produce music. And that was about six years ago. So that's, you know, it's been like a long, you know, long building process to get to where it is right now with it. So, hey, I, I can I can relate to that because that's <laughs> kind of like the same thing that's happened with the show. As a matter of fact, when I was at Blurred Con, have you heard of Mega Rand? I've actually worked with Mega Rand. Yeah. Okay, so one of the guys from his collective did a panel at Blurred Con. Mm-hmm. He did a panel about the blending of hip hop and video games. Mm-hmm. He did like a PowerPoint presentation how it, it all kind of mixed together, showing how people sampled songs like Lil Flip yeah. with Game Over mm-hmm. and all of that. After this, I'll send you an email because I actually taped that. Uh, oh, cool. I want to see that. that uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't tape it, but I recorded it audially of the, the panel. Oh, okay. And um, you probably know Mega Rans. I can't remember his name right now, but when I go back and listen to it. But yeah, he talked about like hip hop and video games have kind of always had some t- type of unique blending that's kind of gone on. Yeah. You know, and that that's so that's so cool how those two could intersect like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, Mega Rain is an awesome guy. Um, we did a Final Fantasy 15 collab uh, last year. I just made like an instrumental and emailed that over to him just randomly and was like, uh, "Hey, you want to rap on this?" And he was like, "Yeah, cool. This this sounds good." And we you know worked that out and then he put it out and that that was like a big surprise for me. <laughs> it was just you know just and that's what's cool about this community too is like you never know but just like trying and just reaching like sending something somebody's way like hey man I'm you know trying to get something going here and you you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to work together and that's that's what's cool about this community too. A lot of us want to see each other succeed and a lot of us want to work together and just put our heads together cuz we're all in that same kind of space. So Real quick about Mega Ran again, and I, I know that's so cool. Did you know he was the first person to get a licensing agreement with Namco? Oh, really? Oh, it was Namco or one of the gaming things, or Capcom. I, I think, think it was, was Capcom. Yeah, it was, it was Capcom. Excuse me, Capcom. He did the, the soundtrack for Mighty Number no. 9. That was the like the fan-funded game that came out. But, yeah, he's he's been killing it. Uh, he did that before Drake and Lil Wayne did it. Mm-hmm. He was the first, so that that's dope. Mega Rand's definitely, you know, just blazing trails out here and just like getting the nerd core scene and the and the uh, video game music scene out there. And that's that's I'm highly appreciative of that guy right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I met him at Magfest earlier this year. As a matter of fact, he performed. Mm-hmm. Well, back to you though, because this is about you. <laughs> Did you have a musical background at the same time that you were playing these video games? Yeah, I first got my first keyboard probably when I was like six. And it was just a little Casio, like 25 key thing. But it, it also had a little sampler on it that you could just hit record and then, you know, say something or, or make a sound. And then you would have that in the keyboard. And so I started messing around and doing like drum work with that. And, you know, like I said, I always did the, the drumming on tables. My brother always did that. So, I, you know, my, t- my teachers were always telling me to stop and to sit on my fingers. And that's that's <laughs> that's old school teaching right there. I yeah. remember that. And you know that's that's what I, I my producer name is Fingers. Not not just for that reason because my fin- you know they tell me to sit on my fingers, but I can if you can see this I can bend my fingers all the way. Whoa, back. Whoa, that's <laughs> some crazy dexterity right there. Yeah. You, you're Mr. Fantastic right there. Yeah, I rolled ten Elastic on dexterity. Man. But yeah, so that's you know that's why I go by Fingers. And well, we were talking about starting out with music. Yeah, so I was I was always just tapping, man, and, and people would get pissed off. And then so I, I wanted to learn, and I I tried to take piano lessons, and I didn't like it because I already knew a little bit from just learning by ear. And that's I would listen to songs on the radio and just kind of play stuff until I got it right on the keyboard. Mm-hmm. And then when I went into there, I was at a certain level, and she was like, "We're gonna start back here at ground ground zero of it all, just like you know nothing." And I, I didn't really like that so I was like (laughs) I I quit lessons and then uh, later on I you know I kept learning music and just playing you know with myself uh, and playing piano and making arrangements on there then later I I got uh, into band with like middle school and picked up saxophone didn't really like that but then play sax very briefly too I also played the piano briefly I learned two ways Suzuki Suzuki, Mm -hmm. where you learn from ear okay and then I, my mom tried to make me go the traditional route in middle school. But at that point, I was like, I want to play sports. With sheet music? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I sometimes wish I could go. I might go back and try to learn again. But 
yeah, they, they've got a lot them. of cool ways to learn now, just like hands on and just, mm. you know, different programs that you're just like seeing what you're doing. And that's, that's more how I was, was just like, I could hear it. And I was, I was like the kid on drum line where I could just look at it, you know, oh, and, just, yeah. and repeat it back. Fine. Sheet music. I, I did learn, you know, through, through band and I, I continued band throughout high school and did drum line and got, got into the, uh, so you on the drums? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I skipped a section. Uh, in seventh grade, I went to percussion, and that's okay. like when I like fell in love with music. I was like, "Yes, here we go!" And you know, I did a lot of the mallet percussion because I had the experience with piano, mm-hmm. and so that translated to just the mallet percussion really easily. And I was first chair mallet percussion. What is does mallet percussion include the xylophone? It's, yeah, the xylophone, the bells, the marimba vibes. It's you know basically anything that's like a laid out piano that you're mm-hmm. hitting with any kind of mallet. So I, I don't know why, but two issues. <laughs> Instruments that are unique that you don't hear music too much, but I, I can spot it real quick and I love when I hear it is in the xylophone yeah. and the harp. Oh yeah, harp's got a very distinct sound too. That's and that's a really complicated instrument. I, I don't know. Every time I look at it, I get confused. My mom is <laughs> my mom plays the harp. Yeah. So she just started that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stringed instruments don't really work well for me with the fingers. Like, like you know, they they bend all the way back. And you, if you want to see that, that's on my YouTube channel. Uh, I've got a bunch of videos of me doing stuff with my fingers. What's your YouTube channel? It's youtube.com slash fingers music. And that's spelled F1NG3RS. So the, you know, the vowels are replaced with numbers. Like, you know, how you used to write on the internet back in the day. <laughs> you just take out, take out the vowels. But let's see. Are you talking about the different sections growing up? Yeah. The different instrument sections, like you had got to percussions and were playing okay, that. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, and then I in high school I did bass line, and, you know, I was the captain of the bass line for a couple of years. And then senior year I was, I was going to do quints, and then I ended up moving away senior year and, you know, went to another school and just, you know, band didn't happen that year. And I went through a couple of years of not really doing music after high school. You know, things got a little rocky and, you know, some medication got involved, you know, doctors and all that, mm-hmm. depression fun stuff. But after that, I, I got into just electronic production and just trying to piece stuff together on my computer using mm-hmm. WavePad and GarageBand, all these free programs where I was just like stitching waves together and layering stuff in the most archaic way. But then in 2011 is when I got Reason and uh, my buddy Steve, Santa Kill Magic, we started producing together and just throwing ideas back and forth and teaching each other what we learned that day. And, you know, that's when stuff really started to pick up and we, we really started to just get our groove and making music because we were like, okay, here's the tools we need. We've got unlimited samples, unlimited instruments, basically. Like, we can just have fun now. This is finally what we've been waiting for, you know, and it just took a while to get there and to, and to figure out, it's like, oh, okay, this is the program. Cool. So it, it's it's just been, uh, you know, not downhill from there, but it's just been a lot of work and fun from there, just producing steadily for the past six years. I've put out two original albums. I've got a third one on the way. What are those two albums? My first one is called VGM, and that's available on fingers.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can stream it on YouTube and SoundCloud. And it's also on iTunes and Spotify now, too. I forgot I got all those things going for me now. So uh, let's see. And then the second album is VGM 2, Surge of Shadows. And with that one, I tried to... The, the first one was kind of like an innocent kind of sounding video game. Like that's It's basically just like a hypothetical video game scoring that I'm doing. And with the second one, I tried to go a little bit darker and like dystopian kind of feel. And yeah. I got into more like the Sega Genesis, you know, era, like sound of some of the textures. And with this third one, it's uh, VGM3 Wasteland. And that's just going to be like 80s influenced, you know, synth wave, retro wave type stuff. And but, you know, with my own little twist, that's that's the cool thing is I can just say, yeah, it's it's synth wave, but you know, it's this going on, you know, instead. So I, I like to blend genres and just take stuff that I like and put it all out. And that's one thing I've always liked to do with my remixes. You'll hear a hip hop remix or, you know, a rock arrangement or something where I just go like full dance mode or EDM. And I love collabing with people and just making those different sounds come out. It's really cool just exploring everything. That sounds so amazing. I can't <laughs> wait to listen. This is a dangerous time for you, and you will be tempted by the dark side of the force. Don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. Blue!
But by the way, if you're just tuning in, you are listening to Chopping It Up Geek with your host, The Cultural Chameleon. And we are broadcasting on 97.3 FM, Richmond Independent Radio, WRIR. Now, I want to talk about the Mangalore mixtape because I've actually heard about this through certain circles Mm -hmm. before I stumbled into you all last (laughs) Sunday. And when I talked to Sean Lovelace, he was like, yeah, they did the Mangalore mixtape. And then I told some other, they're like, Mangalore mixtape? <laughs> so clearly I missed the boat on that. Yeah. Being that I am also a Star Wars fan with Star Trek. How did that come about and what is that? The Mandalorian mixtape is something that we put together to kind of showcase what Kenobi style is. And Kenobi style is a duo that I'm in with Santa Kill Magic. I've mentioned him a couple of times. That's my best friend. We've grown up together. But let's see, we started in 2013, I think, with that project. And we just wanted to, you know, I, I had done a bunch of Metal Gear remixes and just like focused on that. And Steve was like, I want to do something where I just focus on one thing. And for him, his big thing was always Star Wars. So, you know, he talked to me, he's like, hey man, do you want to do a project where we just sample, you know, mainly the original trilogy because we didn't really want to do the prequels just because yeah, that, that music isn't pretty much <laughs> no. iconic the original <laughs> yeah trilogy I mean, there's is. a couple of tra- the, the duel of the fates though that's that's a good track uh we have messed with that a couple of times oh what movie is that from that's uh the phantom menace that that one's when they're fighting the dun, 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 dun. oh yeah 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 yeah. everybody knows that yep. uh-huh. <laughs> yes okay all um right. yeah that's a hype track i can't deny that yeah um, that's good. but yeah so we just we started slowly picking away at the soundtrack and we would just put on you know either the vinyl of of the original you know a new hope and just listen to that and we would just sit there and just hang out and just listen which i had a vinyl of that mm-hmm. and I've, I've, I've got empire strikes back soundtrack yeah but I, it's a two disc cd but oh, okay still- yeah. But yeah, so we would just, you know, listen and then we would hear a hook or just a quick little sample and then go, ooh, that right there. And, you know, it could be two seconds, you know, but then we'll flip that and just turn it into a beat and add different synths behind it. And we like to add voiceovers from the movies in there and just make it as yeah. internal as possible as Star Wars as we can get it. So, oh, I heard some of what you played <laughs> uh, Sunday. I was like, what? Yeah. It blew my mind. I'm like, oh my God, that is amazing. And that, that was from our set, The Diamond. We came out May the 4th, you know, May the 4th be with you. They I had wish a, I'd have been there for that. Oh. They had a big Star Wars event where, you know, the, the 501st Legion came out. That's the, the cosplay yeah, troop. I've, that, I've seen yeah. them at multiple cons I've been to. Yeah, they're great. They were all out there and it was kids day. So just, you know, kids were everywhere just looking at all the Star Wars stuff. And it, it was great. That was a lot of fun just to be out there on Boulevard, just DJing right there on that main, you know, right on top of those steps. But yeah, we, we had a lot of fun, you know, putting that together. Let's see, what else? We've also played it when the episode seven movie premiere happened a few years ago. There was a movie theater up there called the Alamo Draft House. And they called us up there from, they had seen us in the RVA Mag article and they called us up there to play at the movie premiere. And we also got to DJ at the movie premiere. So that was really cool. You know, we're getting a lot of like oddball gigs (laughs) with with playing this Kenobi style stuff. And and that's fun. We'd like to branch out and do more, you know, conventions and stuff like that. You know, if Wizard Con or, you know, the VA Comic Con want to hit us up, that'd be cool. I can put uh, you in contact with VA <laughs> yeah. Comic Con. Sweet. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's, we all grew up in this nerd culture, geek culture stuff. You know, we used to be made fun of for being geeks or whatever. That, yep. That's that's yep. not what it's about. You know, it's just like, this is where we've been our whole life. And like, it sounds hipsterish or whatever. It's like now, you know, all the Marvel movies are out. Everybody's a Comic-Con geek and everybody's a nerd. And it's, it's you know, everybody's doing that now. But for me, it really has always been, you know, just that passion for the scene and, and all the things involved. I've just always liked comics and all all the fun stuff with nerd culture. And so to do something with Star Wars was kind of a no-brainer when he asked me on that. I was like, of course, man, let's do this, you know? Uh, Oh, yes, I'll fall on that grenade, no problem. Yeah, so... And we've put out, we had the a new dope, which was just to play on a new hope that mm-hmm. that was like just a standalone EP where that was all all the sampling that we had done on a new hope. And then uh, we're releasing episode five, Empire Strikes Blap, and that'll be like just like a boom blappy Empire Strikes Black hip hop. And then from there we're gonna do, let's see, what were we gonna call the second, the third one? Return of the Lo-Fi, I think, was what we're going to do for Return of the Jedi. And then, and so that'll be coming out probably next year. And okay. then, you know, so the Mandalorian mixtape was basically a way to just take, take 
everything from all of those ideas and just have it in one little thing so we could send out and just and it's also a free download over at soundcloud.com slash kenobi style so oh if anybody I, wants I will to hear be, that i'll be going after that uh, <laughs> later on today because yeah. i'll be rocking out cool to that yep what is your favorite video game to like work with musically Probably, I've done a lot with Metal Gear. That, that's a game that's been around for 30 years, so it's kind of gone through the different evolutions of what video games sound like. Wait, uh, Metal Gear, forgive me for being <laughs> ignorant, Metal Gear's been around 30 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, I think that was just celebrated on the 13th, yeah, because I put out a remix to mark that. I put out a, uh, a new They Played Us Like a Damn Fiddle remix, which is... One of the many memes that Metal Gear has created over the years. I I did that three years ago. I put out this this remix that it kind of blew up, and it it you know YouTube just kind of took off with it. And I put out a bunch of different versions of it. And you know just just shout out to all the people on the Solid Snake Facebook page and all the other Metal Gear kids out there that have, that have been supportive. Yeah, they played us like a damn fiddle. Kind of became like a meme sensation. It was one of those things that kind of took off out of nowhere like Harlem Shake. Like, it didn't really make sense. It was just like, okay, this is big now. And it wasn't that it was particularly good. You know, it's kind of a silly, you know, meme -y song where he just says cuss words over and over <laughs> over a trap beat, basically. But yeah, so 30 years on, on that anniversary, I, I, I released a new one with my buddy Fanakasu, who's actually based out of Singapore. And that's that's another really cool thing with this with Metal Gear is it's got fans all over the world that wanna that wanna mess with the soundtrack. And I've worked with my buddy Mentorment, who's based out of Australia. You know, Fanakasu's in Singapore. We've worked together a lot on a lot of Metal Gear tracks. Outside of that, probably Mega Man. Mega Man's got amazing music. Sonic's got amazing music. I, and those those are two that I haven't really worked with a lot because I've I kind of when I wanna when I what I want to do is get to those when I'm when I'm a lot better than <laughs> like where I'm at. Okay. You know, like I really want to go at those. You want to be I've, like the master of your craft yeah, and then go after them. Yeah, so I, like I just started doing Castlevania stuff. Like that's another one that I kind of held off. I was like, I want to wait until I'm a little better until until I put stuff out for that. Other games, let's see. Did uh, you see the uh, Castlevania anime? Yeah, or? I, I haven't finished it. I'm about, I uh, saw three episodes. Mm, I think Why I got, did they only put out four? Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, so it's, raw. No, it's yeah, good. I, yes. I am liking what I've seen and I'm excited to see what else they put out. They, they immediately signed for a second season, I think. So yeah, I hope it's long longer than four episodes. Yeah. I need about 13. Uh, I, think I think they were kind of like testing the waters. They were like, this could go either way because especially with video game adaptations, they uh, they normally go pretty bad. So, you know, when, when I saw the announcement for, an, you know, and it being an anime, I was like, that kind of makes sense because when you bring live action into video games, that's when it gets... It can get cringy real quick, you know. It's just yes, you know, as as past movies and, and shows have shown us. But yeah, I was really excited to see that come out so well done. And, and they're even talking about making a Metal Gear Solid movie, which has been in the talks for a long time. But that's finally getting into production, so that's that's exciting to see that coming. What game had the best soundtrack to you, in your opinion? Oh man, that's such a weighted question. Or or if it's not the singular <laughs> game, maybe like top five. All right, well, I got, I got to put Metal Gear up there, like the Metal Gear series, because that's, that's just intense driving epic music throughout the years. And and with the older games, with like the retro stuff, it just had some really cool textures and cool sneaky music. Final Fantasy has definitely had some of the most, you know, impactful themes and just memorable themes, you know, and that that's 15, you know, over 15 games, you know, 15 main games in the series long. So oh, Yes, I went to a panel about it at MagFest. Yeah. I was totally educated on final fantasy yeah played every one of those chrono trigger is one of my favorites that's that game has some amazing music but basically anything that like square squaresoft put out back in the day was just gold the, the super nintendo genesis era of games just had some of my favorite music uh toe jam and earl that that had like the funkiest soundtrack of all time i'm not sure if you're familiar with that that was our early 90s the, like sega genesis game oh i remember seeing ads for it in comic books a lot yeah. i never got to play it but i i saw it and then occasionally i would play not play i would read through the game pro or whatever mm -hmm. and oh, see game ads pro, for that game pro. I'm, I'm gonna let you know something i didn't get to play video games much growing up yeah i had one of those parents that was like nope no video game system in this house mm. but i would play when i could if i went to a friend's house or mm -hmm. whatever but i had an appreciation for it and especially the music because i'm like i like good soundtracks yeah for cartoons movies and, and video games or what have you yeah. so 
it's what's good now is like most of the most of the games are still available in some way or another. You know, like you can go back and replay them. So somebody's like, "Yeah, man, you should check out this game." Like, there's probably a way you can get access to that game nowadays. So, oh, speaking of which, Sega just announced that they're bringing out a retro Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. and it's going to have 84 games yeah. on it. Yeah, they've been doing those those little packs now for a while, but now they're starting to get like official with it, and that's that's good that the actual companies are getting involved and they're. I think making I might sure it's good. get that. I, I missed out on the Nintendo one. That thing sold like hotcakes. Yeah, they, 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 they announced a NES, a Super NES one as well. Mm-hmm. That one they actually listed that at Walmart a couple days ago, and then a bunch of people pre-ordered it and thought they had it, and then they said, "Sorry, we had a technical glitch. All pre-orders have been canceled." And, and you could just hear like a million cries from around the oh, world. Man, like, put no. the put the put the mattresses out. We don't want people jumping out of buildings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what Nintendo does. They like to release stuff in really small, you know, availability windows and then just kind of laugh at people you know, just scrambling to try to get one. So speaking of which, I know this will be played after that, but you have Beating, uh, Beats and Geeks, mm-hmm. your, ga- your gallery showcase. Talk, talk about that. Uh, yeah, so that's that's something that uh, we had started with. Let's see, that's DJ Eight Bit Mullet, uh, Alan Brimer, and Steve Owen again with uh, Santa Kill Magic. DJ Eight Bit Mullet had gotten us booked at uh, Vagabond for just one show, and we basically did the same, almost the same lineup that we're going to be doing tonight. Which was I was doing a finger set, Steve was doing a Santa Kill Magic set, which, and he does a lot of like hip hop, you know, sampled stuff. He samples a lot of anime and sci fi stuff as well, also some video game stuff. But then we got Eight Bit Mullet. He does a lot of video game mashups and, you know, hip hop uh, remixes with that. And so we basically just had like this really nerdy set that was and then we also had Kenobi style. That was the other set. And so we were like, you know, this is all video game nerd stuff like this is like a theme night that we've got going on here. And it's one of the not I'm not I don't think he's the owner, but he does some of the booking. Uh, Reggie Pace, you know, was like, hey, man, you know, I like what you guys have got going. Do you want to do like a monthly residence here and just have, you know, a group where you kind of just cycle out, you know, a couple of members and bring in new acts from out of town. And we just focus on this whole, you know, nerdcore video game music scene. And that's that's kind of how that went about. And then, you know, we did the uh, the first official one was last week and then we're doing the second official one tonight. And so, you know, we've had a, we've had a pretty good turnout. We've also got Bits and Pixels sponsoring the event. Tonight. Saw the poster there when I walked by there yesterday. Yeah, we uh, went down there and talked to him, and we're gonna get some uh, some Sega Genesis consoles actually out there tonight, and just bring out a couple games, and just you know, for just people to play. Might later on try to get some tournaments and some prizes going, some raffles, and as it grows. Yeah, and I think we're gonna have some twenty uh, percent uh, like coupons out there tonight for people you know that come out. So it should be pretty fun. And what time will that be? The doors, I think, well, you know, it, the place opens at four. Uh, it's downstairs in the tea room at Vagabond, and that's down on Broad Street right next to the National. It's going to be free, and it starts, the music starts at 10. And okay. tonight we're kicking out the music with Anova, and then I'm doing a finger set, and then we're doing a Kenobi style set, and then Santa Kill Magic's going to close out the night. So from 10 to 1 o'clock is when we're going tonight. So I will be there. Awesome. You will see me. Yeah, and I think nine o'clock we're gonna all be there, you know, just setting up and getting things started. So, yeah, cool. Well, Jeremy, I want to thank you for coming. Yeah, man. This has been Chopping It Up Geek with the Culture Chameleon. Tune in in two weeks for another exciting episode, and tune in next week for Inspire Indeed with Carol Olson. And as always, stay geeky, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>